Welcome to ICF Insights. I'm Tony Marchese. Well, today we're going to continue our Leadership Legacy Series. And uh, with me, I have Mr. Gene Wilhoyt, who has been a, a significant contributor to uh, education, uh, both in the Appalachia region, but also in the nation. And uh, Gene, I'm really glad you're here today. It's my pleasure. I've, it's good uh, to be here. I, I've and thoroughly enjoyed our conversation uh, last mm -hmm. night uh, at dinner, and uh, our uh, little time slot we have today is, mm -hmm. isn't going to do justice to w mm -hmm. what I'd like to cover. Mm -hmm. um, but I really want to focus today on uh, your professional journey. Oh, sure. um, this series that we, we do uh, on our program uh, happens, doesn't happen a whole lot, but every now and then there'll be an individual that will identify that really has made a difference, has made a significant mm -hmm. contribution, either at the local level uh, the regional level or even at the national mm -hmm. level and um, I think that it's important to hear their story oh, and those influences, uh, those turning points, mm -hmm. uh, to hear about mentors, um, mm -hmm. maybe a book that you read along the way that really shifted uh, mm -hmm. the way that you perceive you know, education or leadership. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I'd like to do today okay. and uh, for those that uh, might be watching today that, that aren't familiar with your background, um, let's kind of trace your journey a little bit in terms of some of the roles that mm -hmm. you served in education? My whole uh, professional career has been in education. I still consider myself a teacher. Uh, that's where I began in the classroom at the middle school and high school level. Stayed there for a short period of time. Had some interventions in my life that uh, I had not planned that led me down some pathways and opportunities that uh, sort of built my career over time. But I was a curriculum director in uh, Indiana, a teacher in Indiana, uh, and um, then uh, after some graduate work, uh, moved into um, positions uh, that are supportive of education. So on one hand, you lose that direct connection, excitement that you get with youngsters, but um, on the other, the positive side of that is you can influence policy direct. Mm -hmm. So most of my career has been in the policy arena, either at the local district level, I served a short time here in Kanawha County, uh, but uh, in West Virginia and uh, in uh, uh, Indiana and um, in Ohio are the three positions prior to moving into uh, work at the st State Department level. I have been in uh, Indiana Department of Education. I was at the U.S. Department of Education for a short period of time. Uh, I ran two national organizations, uh, National Association of State Boards of Education, before going to uh, uh, two commissioner positions, um, Arkansas first and then to Kentucky and then back to the national level at the Council of Chief State School Officers. So I've been an educator. I still consider myself that, even though I'm uh, in a supportive role uh, at the local, state, and national levels. And then you retired, and then you uh, became... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in my retirement, right. uh, we set up a center at the University of Kentucky, uh, read the Center for Innovation Education. We were working on some issues that uh, sort of been in the back of my mind, but because I was practicing and running at a full pace for many years, mm -hmm. didn't have the time to reflect on, to write about, and to uh, work with others around. So it's exciting to, to be in that position now. I know one thing that's important to you is um, having that influence on student learning. You know, uh, many people understand as a teacher, you know, how that might work. Mm -hmm. How did you maintain that at those, in those higher level positions? You know, I, I don't think I had a choice intellectually. Um, I began as a teacher, and I, I still, as I look back on those years, I was in a way discontented in many ways. I, I was always trying a new th way to get to children, to reach them. And, and some of my most memorable experiences with students were with those that were sort of disenfranchised and on the sidelines, and I, for some reason, was able to reach them or not able to reach them, mm -hmm. and that troubled me deeply. Uh, so that struggle draw, drew me into this study of curriculum, instruction, uh, and I held on to that as a director of curriculum, but uh, as I got into administration, I noticed that uh, there was often an absence of this conversation around what is teaching and learning, what are the needs of students, how can we be better um, inform uh, the teaching and learning process, how can we build skills among teachers to help them? Because after all, all the policies in the world, and I don't mean to, uh, to demean those, but none of those policies are going to have direct impact unless our students are engaged in learning in, in really exciting ways and our teachers have the competencies to reach those students and have the support mm -hmm. systems around them uh, to make instruction a positive force in the lives of children. And when 
you know, throughout my career, we've had this sort of transition in society. That is, uh, we are more and more um, uh, experiencing children in poverty, uh, children coming to school with uh, major issues that teachers have to face. Um, so it, it's even more important now that uh, without some of those supports that existed in society prior to uh, recent years, that the teachers have the skill base and the support structures around them. Um, and, and when I got even to the national level, um, I, uh, it was interesting that people began to gravitate to me because I was interested in these things and they had not had those kinds of deep conversations and I think that was an asset to uh, my ability to influence others. Many people in education, either uh, at, the, at the teacher level, a principal level, uh, district level, uh, state superintendent level, view you as a, as a mentor. And um, that didn't just happen. You know, yeah, I think I think uh, people consider folks mentors when they can develop a trust of those mm -hmm. people, and when you treat them with respect, and you approach any interaction with them uh, with that kind of um, a deep respect for the job they're doing, and uh, with a desire to be helpful, uh, mm -hmm. rather than dictatorial sure. in terms of policies. And there's too much, I think, in uh, public education today, is too much uh, a top-down kind of guidance that folks are giving. I think they do it in good faith, but we're really teaching uh, or treating teachers as consumers. Uh, somebody else's ideas come along, mm -hmm. and uh, we say this is the next program that's going to be helpful to you, or this is the next kind of theory of, of work that we want you to implement. And they don't have, in many cases, the kind of input into that, uh, those programming directions that, they, that need to be there. And so sort of approaching folks with this idea that you are important, in fact, you know a lot more about mm -hmm. teaching and learning than the folks who are setting policy in many cases. How do we build a relationship where we're getting information out of you? And, and teachers are treated as producers of knowledge as opposed to consumers of other folks' idea. And I've always tried to keep that in mind, that um, in the field right now, uh, in an environment where people are very critical of our uh, educators, that uh, I find people who are just uh, masters at figuring this out and, and finding solutions to it. Um, I think education generally has not taken advantage of those folks. Um, we don't have a system that rewards those outstanding teachers. We don't put them in positions often enough to influence other uh, teachers and administrators. And we don't build support structures around them so that we can share knowledge. I think one of the biggest issues in education today is that we don't learn from our successes and we don't learn from our failures mm -hmm. in a way that allows the enterprise to, to grow and develop. So I think it's essential that we treat mm -hmm. people with that uh, respect and trust and build systems around them that, that would uh, build success. I've tried to do that throughout my sure. relationship with them. One of the things I'm really interested in is your, your journey, you know, some of the turning points that, you, that you've dealt with um, because, as I said, you didn't automatically become this individual that's perceived as, as a mentor mm -hmm. and sought after for, you know, advice. Um, there had to be some things that happened in your life that mm -hmm. really helped shape how you think, how you, how you work. Um, and so I'd like to talk about some of those origins. Mm. Um, you know, I, I know that um, we talked last night about your experience in your graduate program. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, that was um, in, the, in the 60s, yeah. I believe. Yeah, uh, and I, I, and, uh, I think that um, there are certain uh, occurrences in life that sort of shape you. Uh, and uh, I was uh, a young teacher just beginning a, a career uh, and um, there are two experiences that sort of shaped mm -hmm. my early thinking. The first was how we treat a young teacher in those first experiences is so important and I, I mentioned to you last night that I had a principal named Robert Mahan and, and in an outward appearance was very stern, sort of withdrawn from folks. Mm -hmm. It wasn't uh, the kind of mentor that one would expect uh, that would develop a really strong personal relationship. So uh, as a young teacher I was experiencing some uh, frustration with students who had uh, very limited knowledge. I tried some deep engagement policies with them in, in, in my classrooms. That was a little bit more engaging and more um, noisy than, <laughs> uh, than other classrooms. And there were complaints from the traditional teachers about that. Mm -hmm. He called me into his office after school one day and said, I've got received these complaints. I explained all of this to him. 
and then the whole pr a whole conversation, there was no indication of his response to, how, what was he going to do, fire right. me, uh, sure. or was I going to, to uh, have other positive conversations? At the end of that, he just said, I just have some advice for you. It might be difficult, but keep doing what you're doing. This is, this is reaching students. Wow. Well, for a young teacher to get that kind of response, and the reason I raise that is the experiences that, that you have at the beginning of your career with administrators, with mm -hmm. building level principals are so important. They need, teachers need to know that there's a support base there and that there's somebody watching for them, somebody who's willing to mentor them. This same person then called me into his office a couple of years later and said, you're leaving me. Oh. <laughs> uh, it wasn't as if I, Gene Wilhoyt, had a choice in right, this. He sure. had decided I was going to go uh, to this program. He had pulled out a folder of a Ford Foundation program. 12 to 13 individuals were going to be taken into the Indian University program, graduate program, for intensive study. And that literally changed my life. It took mm. me out of the realm of that sort of in-classroom experience and I was exposed to not only um, high rigorous content mm -hmm. acquisition, which you would want in a master's program, but a cohort, a process of thinking about change strategy and agencies. We made some mistakes in that program. It sure. was based on some uh, foundations that we later learned uh, could be improved. But that experience <clears throat> of uh, intensive interaction with a cohort of folks around strong uh, support system made a, a tremendous impact on my life. And I began to think about the world very differently. It is a system out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have components within that system that need to be addressed. It's, it's so important to build high quality curriculum designs for folks to, to teach against. And um, had some direct experience in writing some uh, textbooks and uh, <laughs> assisting with that process. Uh, experiences I wouldn't have had in a traditional way. So that influenced my life uh, directly.